Welcome back to Game Geeky Tech. The series is about underrated decks and the underrated tech. In this month, we're focusing on the underrated archetype going into the Secret Forces set, you send you, as I like to call them, bonus furry agenda. Okay, people may argue that Richard Beast was the underrated one in the set, but did you see you send you's be meta? No? That's what I thought. I mean, do people even remember what this archetype is? I mean, I feel like if I asked someone, they would go, is that the deck that does chain summons and makes links? And they somehow would be accurate, even if they were just talking about Skyfang, which is already a really weird coincidence that there's two furry decks focusing on chain summoning and making links. Anyway, Yusenju is definitely one of the more underappreciated decks of the Arc V anime archetypes. Uh, I think that translates into its lack of popularity in the card game, and let's be honest, you send your strategy is more about being a nuisance than actually winning the game. But, you know, Ghost Tricks is the thing, a nuisance style deck with no real win condition, and it, it was still popular. So, let's just see what, you know, stopped you send yous from just popping off. You send you originated from the Yu Gi Oh Arc the anime where it is used by Silvio McDickhead. Okay, that's not his real last name, but the kind is so notches to watch. He's like the Virgin Jaden to the Chad Thundercock who is Akaba in this analogy, which is a shame because Silvio not only played two of my favourite Arc V archetypes, you send you an Abyss Actor, due to the fact that you send you was being played during the first third of the anime, he was really schizophrenic of his decks. <laughs> <sighs> this meant he played Yusenju only for one match, and then dumped them for Abyss Actor, which sucked because this stopped Yusenju from getting more support via the anime, which is also a shame because I liked him on Yusenju more. Abyss Actor may fit his showboaty nature more, but his Yusenju du duel is one of the best duels in the anime, hands down. It really takes the action duel gimmick and makes it a very exciting back and forth duel, but Enough about how much I love the anime, we got an archetype to debrief. Yusenji was released into the card game not via a main deck set, like most anime archetypes, not through one of those anime legacy support packs, but in a deck builder set. I mean, it was very weird seeing an anime deck being released in a deck builder set that also had dual turn archetypes. One day I'll get around to talking about Secret Forces as a whole, but let's say this set seemed very slapdashed. Yusenju being the little brother of the set, going back to the analogy I used in the Ritual Beast video, was immediately neglected because it was forced to complete with Necros, and continued to see no love at all until Kaiju showed up and it saw some interest during the early experimentation days, but it was dropped into neglect following Slumber Limit. Also, fun fact its first wave of post release support was released in Jan 2015 in the TCG. Secret Forces wasn't released until Feb 2015, so there was a whole month where these two support cards that was in that set was completely useless. Thanks, Konami. Good job. <laughs> the only other form of support the deck got was some more anime imports in Cross Souls, and it wasn't until Rising Rampage the deck got some actual fun support as it gave the deck better scales to work with and more consistency. This is about the time I got interested in the deck because they had a funny boss monster now that, you know, wasn't Dybark, because Dybark isn't funny. And I ended up enjoying how much the deck has synergy with another wind deck in the Arc V anime, which we will get to. Yusenju also has quite the amazing aesthetic seeping in that rich Japanese culture, especially seeing the Yusenjus I'm presuming is based on, well, yokai spirits. So, you know, Japanese yokais are already an amazing thing to base an archetype around already. So the fact that its whole entire aesthetic was just neglected because, you know, it wasn't that popular in the anime really sucked. <laughs> But anyway, we should get off this tangent and talk about the actual cards themselves. We should probably talk about the main stars of the show, Yusenju Kama 1, 2, and 3. Each of them have the ability to normal summon chain another Yusenju from the hand, with the main idea being chain summoning all three brothers. Unfortunately, future support neglects the extra normal summoning, which makes this card, well, mandatory free offs, but that's not a bad thing. 
These guys are useful in their own rights, with one being a bounce, two being a direct attacker, and three searching you send use when another one does battle damage. The fact three searches you send use is very good for this deck, considering the other problem this deck has is the empty board state you will be left in due to the fact that level four you send use don't like being normal summoned, so they bounce back during the end phase. The deck does have in archetype options to help deal with this, so we'll look into them when we get to them. <laughs> now for the unofficial trio you send you brothers, and I'm sorry if I butcher their names, Aizami, Seibu, and Chisujik, who are questionable ratios. Going through them one by one, I Aizami is a 2-3 to three off, being able to discard it to make your Senju summoning safe is very good as this deck dies, you know, if it can't do its summons. <laughs> but so, yeah. And the draw one is even better, but the fact it has weak stats while it's out is best used as fodder if you are going to plan to do tribute summoning or you plan to link summon in any way. Mm. Seibu, or as my friend likes to call it, Seibu Uwu, it disgusts me by the way, uh, is your Penlim Searcher. Very Silvio is my preferred way to search the Mayo, se Mayo Senjus, seeing the only other option is insulting, plus being able to send a face up you send you to activate one of the two win cards, V really helps with the nuisance playstyle, so I like to run them at three. As for Jisujik, <laughs> Optional is my call on, for this card. Being an arc type of honest is cool, and being able to use its boost effect from field or hand is cool, but heat hold exists. You know, just run it if you like hand traps, I guess. I want to briefly cover the Pelhams now, before we cover more of the other stuff, as this deck benefits from its Pelhams. Because seeing special summoning level 4 your Senjus doesn't make them run away like pussies. <laughs> As for your Pendulum options, there's two sets of options, and one of them is objectively wrong. The objectively wrong option is the Sinchu pair, who are dated. On field protection is cool and all, but it takes up space on the board and in the deck. Like, why run a scale that takes up four to six card spots in your deck when you can just run Heat Hot and save like two to three spots? Heatot is a great support card because it turns your other pre existing Mayu you send you boss monster, Dybuck, into your other copy of Gate. There is only one upside to running the Gates, which is, well, we'll get to that later. But Van Heatot and Dybuck at two apiece both make a great boss monsters and are highly searchable thanks to, yet again, Very Silvio. On the topic of boss monsters, here's two Persuado boss monsters, Misak and Magat, who are the original support cards from Secret Forces, and they're okay. Misak I run at 1 personally, but there's a case for him to be run at 2, mainly because the fact he has, well, great removal options, and can be easily summoned off Magat, who is low-key amazing. Being able to tribute one you send you at the end of your chain to summon a you send you from your deck is quite useful. This can be a way to search any you send you you want for your situation that you couldn't get at the start of your hand. I run at no more than two. These last two monsters are the ones I always forget they exist, and that's for a good reason. Kodam is weird to be honest. A level one monster that you can tribute to put tokens on one Pacific card and when it's in your graveyard, gives you an extra normal summon. Not bad on paper, but in practice, you have to summon this at the end of your normal summon chain, and then have this one specific card on your field for it to work. Yes, we have the link error now, so we can just tribute it off, so you can have that extra normal summon, but the fact it's first fit only works with one card is kind of off-putting. Another downside, the deck space is kinda cramped, even for a pure variant, so it's fine for space. If you do like what it can do for you, run out free, but for me, it's fighting for space between searches like Wine and Tenki. As for the other monster, Oh Yam is a uh, pretty funny. <laughs> a hand trap that becomes a big boy and searches on Bow Destruction. On paper, should be a free off, in practice, it takes up valuable space. Still an option to consider. Okay, we've got four spell options, and only two of them are mainstays, so let's cover the useless ones. Ovashi Channeling 
is the only reason why you would run gates. Being able to make scale some deck is very strong, or even searching your higher level Z Senjus is pretty good. The problem is you need an empty board, and then it does lock you into Yusenju, so no links or rank 4, so you have to give up your toolbox options so you can fully dedicate yourself to making a Yusenju board, which isn't very strong to begin with. I personally don't think it's worth it, if you couldn't tell by my tone of voice, so don't run it. <laughs> As for Wind Worship, it, it confuses me. <laughs> you need to control 3 or more Yusenju monsters to activate it. So. When you do activate it, it bounces all your monsters back to your hand, so you can draw cards until you have 5 in your hand. I'm sh I am sure you, the audience, will notice the massive flaw in this card. You are bouncing at least 3 cards back in your hand, so presuming your hand was empty to begin with, that's maybe a plus 2? It's a situational plus 2 just to send back all your cards to your hand, and for something the deck will just do by itself anyway. <laughs> like, what? Reading this card, I feel like I'm missing something, but just don't run it. Like, maybe if they made it so you can keep drawing cards until you had seven in your hand, that would probably make it less situational, but then again, on an empty hand, you're drawing like plus four. I don't know, it's just, this card just makes no sense to me. <laughs> Lose advantage to get more cards in your hand. Why? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was that was an off screen tangent. We'll just we'll just carry on. I don't think I need explained why Yosin Training Ground is a good card, because you know, you, you have eyes. You wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't have any, so you can read this card to see why it's good. So I'm gonna cover Yosin Whirlwind, and why not also Jizzling Winds of the Yosin Village. Both are two offs because Sylvia's persona comes in and saves the day, but make sure you don't need to pay for their weird activation conditions. Whirlwind isn't a real bad defender, considering for a possible 800 life points, you can get a bounce a card when you bounce or you send you. Pretty good so far, but. And this is a very big but. It's a hard once per turn. So, once per turn, you get to bounce one card. If you don't bounce a card, it pops itself. It, the, the fact the popping part is even bad, because this deck has like three mandatory continuous to run and still needs to run scales, so, you know, you, moving itself is very welcomed, but, you know, it's a bit awkward to use at times. Dithling Winds is the one you want to activate off Saber, though, because it's either that or waiting for a level 6 to be on your board. <laughs> but, you know, once it's activated, though, as long as you have any Sendru in your scales, all enemy bounce cards are shuffled back into the deck, which is just a great way to deny hand advantage that you'll be giving them by just giving them back the cards in hand. Okay, I say hand advantage, but it's not like we're fighting Bermuda Triangle here. So, you know. The point is, cards in deck, not in hand, is good. Run these cards for max nuisance points. These last two traps are... They are, well, they are, um... Fun. Yeah, let's just say they're fun. Um, these last two fun cards are Sword Sting and Secret Move. Sword Sting allows you to blow back two face-up cards of your choice if you control no monsters and you reveal two Senjus in hand. This is quite fun in correlation with Dizzling Winds just to activate during your opponent's turn and ruin any plan they have of advancing their board state. Secret move requires you to have a face-up Senju card and all the monsters you control to be you Senju, so it can be a Omni Negate. Okay, that one is less fun, as it needs you to have board set up for Pendulum Summoning, ideally. So, it can work, and it only be viable in a pure variant. Still, pretty funny though. Optional free off ratios of your choice. Okay, now in a little of our usual tech options section, we are going to be doing something a little different, and talk about a completely different archetype, which is Speedroids. Speedroids are in this rare and incredible position, where most of its cards are really good in other decks, something I would say only applies to archetypes like Danger or Leia. They aren't exactly an engine, but they can be easily splashed into other decks to either give them more consistency or more viable plays. Okay, I just described an engine, but that doesn't deny the fact that, you, that Speedroids, along with Wind Witch, post up the entire win attribute with its cards. So, I want to focus this segment not only on Speedroid cards that you can do well when you send you, but other win-based decks. So let's get to it. 
And if you're wondering about other really good win tech, go actually check out the Gusto video. I feel like a lot of the cards I, well, win based cards I recommended for Gustos would apply to a lot of other win based archetypes. So if you want some more ideas, go check out that video. Let's begin with the main trio that is the bare minimum for a speedway and engine Teratop, Takatomborg, and Kartobo, all mandatory free offs. Okay, Teratop is limited, but if it wasn't, it's a free off. Um, this enables rank freeze, chair being needed for BA tech, and now thanks to Kartobo, level 6 and level 9 synchros, even in non synchro focused decks like Yusenju's. Takatamborg and Kartobo are great additions as they special summon themselves from hand if you control a wind monster, and Takatamborg can just tribute itself into Kartobo anyway, so free synchro. Kartobo also doubles as a boost card in the graveyard top this off, tear tops such as both of these cards, and other you send well, not you send your speed roids on summon. <sighs> For a 7 card engine, it's amazing in terms of the size of it and the capacity of plays available just due to these three cards. For, of course, in something like you send you, you will be giving up some of your more important pieces, but if you want to run this engine, I suggest gutting a Misak, Magat, and maybe a Servigen X such as at least. I think it's a pretty good trade-off though, because in fact, for consistency, you're just going to go, here's more toolbox options to work with, worth it. <laughs> Another two speedroids to consider for Yusenju is Menko and Partyhorn Kid. Menko is pretty good as a stroll card, which is more than welcomed, because you know, there's a self balance issue with Yusenju's. It's also a very useful level for Fank 4 plays, so there's that. As for Pyhorn Kid, run out too if you want to activate your cards, but the fact it doesn't have a special summon condition hurts it a bit. But thankfully this is a pendant deck, so it does have its place. Actually that's a lie because all four of the scales lock you into you send you, so you can't even do that. Better luck next time, kiddo. Maybe maybe in a other deck like I don't know, Harpies. Covering level one tuna options, we have gun buys, which well you can see it's situational, so let's talk about Malicious Magnet. I love this card for the same reason why I hate Battle Ball. It's a Synchro Kaiju, and I love it, except, you know, unlike Battle Ball, this card is Sun Law off by 1 1 and is not limited, well, is only limited to the Wind Monsters, unlike Battle Ball, which is limited to, well, it's what, Super Heavy Monsters? And Super Heavy Monsters are not really special outside of Super Heavy, so, you know, Battle Ball can suck my ass. <laughs> I, I don't. Think I need to explain anymore? It's special battle ball. Just play if you're a super heavy player and you want more opportunities to make people hate you. Good damn battle ball players. Ugh. We aren't going to cover any of the speedroid synchros because they are all good in their own right, but not particularly interesting. The one monster that is particularly interesting is high speedroid of a band shooter, and I think it's essential for any win deck. Simply being a link to win that only needs win material is good, but then it gives you an extra normal summon of a win monster. In you send juice, this is a fun extender for certain plays, and in other win decks, that's another free body. It's also a well good in speed roy engine because you can just banish a wind synchro from your extra to search speed voids from your deck. It's an extremely useful card when it comes well using conjunction with speed void engine and should not be skipped on even if you don't use speedroid engine. The last two cards you can consider if you want to splash speedroid is Scratch and Roulette. Scratch is simple, discard speedroid to search speedroid. Easy way to find your tail top. As for Roulette, it's gambling, so you, you can summon your speedroid from deck or hand, but it's kind of useless in a bare minimum engine since you need to roll a 6 in order to get its effect off. Both should be considered if you want to expand the speedroid engine for your deck of choice. Moving into deck lists real quick, I only have two at time of writing. First is my pure variant, focusing on making use of the intended playstyle to somewhat okay results. It has a slow start, but is quite potent once you get the scales ready. As for my speed void variant, it is a mix match of the two styles, but with a bigger focus on making plays. It uses the bare minimum speed void engine alongside Budge Powerball to do funny synchro shit. Ah, you send you, you beautifully neglected child. You were quickly dropped from the anime for a far more interesting pendulum deck, and then you were shoved into a rush side set as a filler archetype. 
even I shoved you aside for a whole segment so I could talk about a far more interesting wind deck from the same run of the anime. That's not to say I still have a soft spot for these very yokai weasel things, I, I, I guess. Their playstyle is unique and interesting, even if it suffers from poor design decisions such as only having three cards carrying the main gimmick, but I think that's a downside that could be said for a lot of deck builder archetypes. All of these deck builder sets don't have cohesiveness, I guess you can say, in their playstyle, but when they do have that room to believe, they are a joy to work with. Okay, enough of this facade, because honestly, if you want a chain summoning deck with fairies in it, play Skyfang Brigade. <laughs> honestly. You sentries are fine, but if bouncing isn't your thing, Skyfang is the all rounder option. Now, with our video on you at an end, we can finally move on to the final offerings of the Secret Forces set, Necros. In like 20 years, because Ritual Tech and Dual Tunnel being together makes me so violently ill, it makes me want to actually talk about a main set archetype. One with less of a focus on extra deck lockdown, and more on column lockdown. <sighs> so, welcome to the end of the video. I'll try to keep this brief, because this was a bit of a longer episode, at around 21 minutes. So, I just want to say thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, and thank you to everyone else who was patiently waiting for this video after Gusto's. I I know I did leave us hanging for a month, but you know, moving houses, especially when moving across states, is a messy business and takes a while, but we're settled now. I'll be going back to my normalcy. We'll be trying to, well, I'm gonna try to focus on doing really two things moving forward, which is the gimmicky text, the montages, and if you're lucky, maybe a Let's Play video here, and then maybe a couple of Grudge Match Club episodes. Um, podcast, I don't think we'll go back to it. Never did well on the channel, and the time zones between me and Ethan now are even worse now for setting up a podcast. So we're not going to go back to doing that. Anyway, what I do want to um, do and say real quick is um, I will be streaming again back on over at my Twitch, DXD, the DXD Agenda. You know, just in case you want to watch me, well, either complain about RNG in lore or just fuck around and find out in League of Legends. Maybe I'll stream some Warframe grind here and then because I've been getting back into Warframe recently. <sighs> and then, you know, there's also Twitter if you want to follow my. Excuse me, if you want to follow me on my following about and all that, and finally, Patreon, if you just want to support what I do, <laughs> really, so pretty much, you know, by supporting me for Patreon, I'll eventually can afford to have better equipment, mainly like, well, a better mic to begin with, this Razer headset mic is not exactly the best for work, but anyway, thank you for, um, tuning in. I hope you're looking forward to my next video on, well, it should be easy to guess. I mean, it's a main set deck with focus on columns, and if you think it's Mech Knights, well, I don't know how what to call you, honestly, if you think it's Mech Knights. So I'll see you next time for that, even though we're going to do a different card game next time, but I feel like you guys won't tune in for that episode anyway, so <laughs> yeah, see you for that episode after the episode I'm planning next. It's confusing. I'm just going to end it here.